Hi guys, it's Stock Curry, and Tuesday is the worst day of the worst week of the worst month of the stock market historically. But that does not necessarily mean that stocks are going to go down this week. So today, I've got a dozen different stocks for you guys to consider. So let's get into it. All right, there's really no economic news coming out this week, so this is going to be a really slow week in the stock market. Also, because Monday was a holiday in the United States, a lot of traders tend to take long extended weekends, which means volume tends to be really low after a long three-day weekend. And so I expect volume to be quite low this week. I expect the stocks to trade mostly flat this week. But I do want to let you know that just historically speaking, that September is the worst month of the year for stocks. And this week after Labor Day in the US is the worst week of September. And Tuesday specifically is the worst day of the week. So we are literally about to enter the worst day of the worst week of the worst month of the stock market on a historical basis. Now, just like in weather, you can look at climatology to kind of get an idea of what the weather might be like, but there's no guarantees of what weather will necessarily be, you know, tomorrow or this week or this month. And so in the same thing in the stock market, we can get a look at the stock market and get a filling for the fact that September and October are historically the worst two months in the stock market, but that doesn't guarantee that September of 2021 is going to be the worst month of the stock market. And so I just wanted to let you guys know about that and explain that. But if we do combine the historical way the stock market goes with the fact that stocks are highly overvalued right now with the P.E. ratios as high as they've been, really not since the dot-com bubble of 1999 and 2001. And you combine that with the fact that we have, on average, three corrections per year. And in the last year, we have had one correction in the NASDAQ, zero in the S&P, and zero in the Dow, uh, at least in the last 11 months. So that is ridiculous. Like All of those signs point to the fact that we are significantly overdue for a market correction. The problem is most people don't think the market correction is going to kick off until the Fed starts tapering their bond buying. Typically, well, they've only done it once before, but the last time the, Ted, the Fed tapered their bond buying, we saw the stock market go down for a few weeks and then it turned around and went right back up to new all-time highs. And so that really a lot of people think is going to be the catalyst. The problem is as the Delta variant expands and now there's talk about this new MU variant and as there's talk about things possibly shutting down again, we had the terrible jobs report on Friday, all of those things point to the possibility that the Fed is going to delay their tapering of their bond buying. But whenever they do in fact do that, whenever they get around to actually announcing that, that will most likely be the catalyst that triggers this market correction that everybody's kind of been waiting on. Now, whether that happens in September or October, November, December, nobody really knows, but historically it would happen in September or October. Okay. Uh, all of that said, since we don't really know what's going to happen, I've got a dozen different stocks for you guys to consider buying this week. Um, also, I want to let you know that over the weekend, Larry Jones, uh, stock up with Larry Jones, he called me out and he said he wants me to tell you guys what my top four long-term investments would be. And so... I wanted to let you know that Larry Jones isn't just saying that all, you know, just for fun and games. The reason that he's trying to get a perspective on what my top four long-term stocks would be. And by the way, the catch on that is he said, your top four long-term stocks, if you could buy them at a 10% discount. Now, why would he say that? Why would he include the 10% discount? Well, here's why. If we get a market correction, keep in mind that a dip in the market is anything where the market dips between, say, 1% to 9%. A market correction, technically, is a dip between 10 to 19%. And then if the market goes down 20% or more, that is known as a market crash or a bear market. However, we aren't really expecting a market crash or a bear market right now. We're just expecting a correction. And so that means that stocks could dip between 10 and 20%. And so uh, Larry Jones coming out and saying, what long-term holds would you do if you could get them at a 10% discount is not just some you know, random question. He's seriously looking at the fact that in about a month or two, 
a lot of great long-term hold stocks could be trading at a 10 to 15% discount. And so it's a really good thing. It's a really good important question to look at so that you can get prepared and start thinking about what you might want to buy after the market correction occurs. And so what I have done is I went through and you got to remember, we have covered over 400 stocks on this channel in the last six months. 400 stocks in the last six months have been covered on this channel. That's a lot of stocks to dig through. However, after digging through all of them, I have come up with my top 15 long-term hold stocks. Now, it's way too much to cover in this video. So later today, about midday Monday, maybe around 1, 2 p.m. Eastern time, I'm going to be releasing another video with my top 15 long-term stocks, and then I'll give you my top four from those. So... All of that said, look out for that video coming out later on uh, Tuesday. Sorry, it's going to be Tuesday. Yeah, Monday was yesterday. So later on Tuesday, I'll be putting that video up around 1, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, for now, let's get into the dozen or so stocks that I've got for you for this week. Uh, for those of you guys who maybe are new to this channel, maybe Larry Jones sent you over, welcome. I'm glad to have you. Uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Stock Curry. I used to work as an analyst for some large investment banks, and now I analyze stock picks on YouTube. Every single day, I spend hours and hours and hours watching YouTube videos, and then I consolidate all of the stock picks from the top YouTubers, and I put them together into a single video. I give you both the cliff notes on their stock picks, as well as my analysis on their stock picks. Now, if anything I talk about today piques your interest, make sure you listen to who I say talked about that stock, and then go watch their video to get the full details on what they said. Now, all I ask for putting all of this together for you guys is that you hit that like button, subscribe, and follow the page so that you can get notified when I release my next video. In fact, I'll give you five seconds to do that right now. All right, before we get into today's stock picks, I just want to remind you that I am not a financial advisor. Nothing I talk about today is a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold. These are just my opinions, which may or may not be accurate. Please do your own research before investing in any asset. For those of you who are wondering, you are currently looking at the Weeble desktop app. Weeble is the app that I use in my trading, and it is also the app that I use in all of my videos. If you'd like to get two free stocks worth up to $2,300, you can sign up for Weeble using my link in the description below. When you sign up using my link in the description below and deposit just $100, Weeble is going to send you two free stocks worth up to $2,300. All right, let's get into today's stock picks. And first up is ETH. This is Ethereum. Stockmo let us know that ETH just became deflationary for the first time ever. On Sunday, there was more ETH burned than was created. Now, there's no guarantees that ETH will remain deflationary, but this is the main reason Stockmo thinks ETH will eventually get to $100,000. ETH is very close to $4,000 once again. I will also let you know that Bitcoin is now above 52000 and Dogecoin is back above $0.30. Cents. So we're seeing a rebound across the board on crypto and what appears to be a sustained bull run in cryptocurrencies. All right, the first of our stock picks is AAPL. This is Apple. Keenan Gray said AAPL is a great stock to own in order to build a strong foundation in your portfolio. Keenan Grace likes all of the new products that AAPL is rumored to be releasing soon, including the new Apple Watch Series 7. Keenan Grace also likes how AAPL just received their autonomous testing permit from the DMV, which shows they are making great progress on their EV that they are working on. I will also let you know that AAPL made my list for the top 15 long-term hold stocks to buy now. I will let you know how far up or down on that list it ended up in the video that I plan to release later today. Next up is AMZN. This is Amazon. Keenan Grace let us know that AMZN is now shipping cargo for outside customers in a move to compete against FedEx and UPS. That could be huge for AMZN because they are filling a need for more shipping options given the massive supply chain issues currently affecting the world due to a worker shortage in the shipping industry. Next up is BABA. This is Alibaba and they're the Chinese version of Amazon. 
Chris Sane said BABA is a buy under $160. The problem is that BABA is now showing 100% confirmation of a rebound. The candles have closed above the 10 day EMA for the past three days in a row. The RSI is rising and is no longer oversold and the MACD formed a golden cross last week and is rising as well. The RSI is still below 50 and the MACD is still negative. So both of those point to a much more upside potential from here. It is unlikely that BABA will drop below $170 again anytime soon. And if the China FUD subsides, we may never see $170 on BABA ever again. So instead of waiting for BABA to drop back down again, I like the idea of buying in now if you are interested in opening a position. And like I said before, when a stock is down over 50% from its highs a few months prior, you don't need to wait for another dip. It already dipped. This is the dip. Just go ahead and buy in now if you're interested in the stock. That's what I would do anyway. Okay, next up is BBIG. This is Vinco Ventures. Keenan Grace gave an update on BBIG. He let us know that an analyst said BBIG is a quote unquote, tailor made short interest play for retail traders. Keenan Grace went over the volume data to explain why BBIG is running up and to consider whether BBIG will continue going higher or if it will drop back down again. Now, one thing that Keenan Grace pointed out is how shorts have started covering their positions. So the short squeeze has started, but it hasn't really blown up yet. BBIG will run much higher in price if and when the full short squeeze occurs. And by the way, with the borrow rates over 100%, it makes it impossible for short sellers to reshort this stock because their maximum profit is 100%. And why would you pay more in interest than you could make? So it really doesn't make sense for short sellers to continue to short this stock. It really looks like this has really great potential at a short squeeze. Keenan Grace took a look at the chart and said that if BBIG runs back above $11, then it might be time to buy a call option to ride BBIG up as it short squeezes. And if BBIG drops below $6.50, it might be time to buy a put option to ride the fall back down. So Keenan Grace is just watching BBIG right now and waiting for clarity on the direction of the stock price so that he can open a position. Zip Trader pointed out how BBIG has a massive run up followed by two days of selling off and then had another massive run up followed by another two days of selling off. To Zip Trader, that could be a sign that Tuesday will be another big run up. And next up is CHWY. This is Chewy and they're an online pet store. Chris Sane likes CHWY because it was down 14% last week. Chris Sane said that he likes to pounce once stocks drop around 20%. Chris Sane said the reason is because, quote unquote, all stocks go back up. Well, I have a warning for you. That is not true. All stocks do not go back up. There are many stocks that will go to zero. You don't want to buy a stock just because it's down 20%. I mean, look what happened back in March and April. A lot of stocks dropped 50 to 70%. If you had bought when they were down 20%, you would have lost an additional 30 to 50%. And sadly, many people did. So you need to look at a stock much deeper than just how much the stock price is down to determine if it's a good buy or not. So let's look at CHWY and analyze whether or not this would be a good stock to buy. So the first question is, why did the stock drop? And in this case, CHWY dropped after a weaker than expected earnings report. Now the good news is that CHWY showed a 27% increase in quarter over quarter revenue and their net loss narrowed 49% from last quarter. Analysts think CHWY's growth rate will slow from its historical 37% down to a more stable 18.3%. So it's still growing, just not as fast as in the past. And a slower growth rate is going to demand a lower forward PE ratio, as well as a lower share price. So now that CHWY has dropped, is now a good time to buy. 
Well, just looking at the analysts who covered CHWI in the last five days since earnings, they all rated a buy with about a 30% upside potential and an average $100 price target. Now, looking at the technicals, we can see that CHWI is very close to the 300-day EMA. It is also very close to oversold. The problem, though, is that while it might be near a bottom, it is still falling. So buying in now would be like trying to catch a falling knife. But once it bottoms out, this could make a good medium to long-term hold with a one-year $100 price target. Next up is CLSK. This is CleanSpark, and they're a solar energy company. Chris Zane likes CLSK in the $10 to $11 range. But just like BABA, CLSK has already shown 100% confirmation of a rebound with the candles above the EMAs, the RSI rising, and the MACD rising. It is unlikely CSLK will drop back down to the $10 to $11 range again anytime soon. If you're interested in buying CLSK, now would be a great time to buy in. Chris Sane gave a $28 price target on CLSK. I will let you know that CLSK has strong resistance at $20 and again at $25. So I will give you a short-term $20 price target and a medium-term $25 price target. Next up is HOOD. This is Robinhood. Jeremy with Financial Education showed us how ARK Invest just bought 260,000 shares of HOOD in their ARK F portfolio. I want to point out that ARK Invest only bought shares in the ARKF portfolio and did not add shares in their other two portfolios that they currently have HOOD shares in. Now, Jeremy with Financial Education has quite a few concerns about investing in HOOD, and his concerns are the same as my concerns. First, HOOD is really a user growth story, and we aren't getting a lot of new investors in the markets lately. The number of new investors coming into the market has dropped significantly since March. Also, a lot of people who have been investing for 12 months or more have negative feelings towards Robinhood after their fiasco with limited buying of stocks back in January and their relationship with Citadel. Another concern is that HOOD gets most of its revenue from payment for order flow, and the SEC is considering outlawing payment for order flow, which will really hurt Robinhood's business. Another concern is that HOOD gets their second largest portion of their revenue from the bid-ask spread on cryptocurrencies. There is discussion that the bid-ask spread might be significantly reduced over the next few years. And as it is, that is going to significantly hamper HOOD's revenues even further. So all of that said, Jeremy with Financial Education said there is nothing that makes him want to invest in HOOD right now, and I agree. Next up is JD. This is JD.com. Jeremy with Financial Education talked about how Kathy Woods has been buying JD. In fact, ARK added another $10 million worth of JD on Thursday. By the way, if you're wondering what you're looking at right now, this is called Lucid Tracking, and they track all of the buys and sells from ARK Invest, BlackRock, and a few other ETFs. It's still in beta testing, but if you want access for it, I have an invite for it on my resources page. Now, Jeremy with Financial Education said that while he won't be buying JD because it's a Chinese stock, he said that if he was going to buy Chinese stocks, BABA would be his number one pick and JD would be his number two pick. Next up is MARA. This is Marathon Digital Holdings, and they're a Bitcoin miner. This is a high conviction play for Zip Trader. He said the reason it's running up lately is because Bitcoin has been running up. Zip Trader rated MARA a hold and said he is waiting for MARA to go much higher in price before selling. Next up is NIO. This is NIO, and they're a Chinese EV manufacturer. Stockmo likes how NIO rebounded last week. The candles are now above the EMAs, the RSI is rising, and the MACD is also rising, having formed a golden cross last week. NIO is now showing 100% confirmation of a rebound. Stockmo thinks this is the start of the rebound that was needed to get NIO to $60 by the end of this year. And next up is SPRT. This is support.com. 
ZipTrader gave an update on SPRT on Monday. ZipTrader said that while SPRT has been falling in both share price and retail interest, it could be getting ready for round two. His reason is because SPRT is still heavily shorted with short interest over 70%. ZipTrader took notice of how SPRT is currently at the 10-day EMA, which could be the point at which longs get back into SPRT. There's also the merger vote coming up on Friday, which could cause a pre-anticipatory run-up going into Friday. Next up is TSLA. This is Tesla, and they're an American EV manufacturer. Tom Nash reviewed a video that was released from the Ukraine that appears to show a fully autonomous self-driving Tesla. This is the same expanded full self-driving mode that TSLA just released in the United States. What Tom Nash found interesting was how well the expanded FSD performed in the Ukraine, which is a country that does not have the same level of infrastructure as the United States. By the way, the owner of the Tesla was able to use FSD because they are an official beta tester, and they believe that they might have the very first FSD Tesla in Europe. So comment down below what you think about Tesla having a full self-driving beta tester in the Ukraine and what that might mean for Tesla's European sales. And the last stock we're going to talk about today is ZM. This is Zoom. Jeremy with Financial Education let us know that Kathy Woods bought about 200,000 shares of ZM on Tuesday of last week. ZM dropped significantly last Tuesday after beating earnings, but providing weak Q3 guidance. ARK Invest felt like ZM was oversold, which it was, and they bought an additional 200,000 shares. Now, last week I explained why I don't like ZM. You can search YouTube for Stock Curry ZM to get my thoughts on it. Jeremy with Financial Education said he likes ZM, but he doesn't love it. He said it's still kind of expensive, and I agree. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and get a lot out of it. Comment down below what your favorite stock pick is. And if you're looking for a broker to trade with, you can sign up for Weeble using my link in the description below. When you sign up using my link in the description below and deposit just $100, Weeble's gonna send you two free stocks worth up to $2,300. And now if you're not a US resident, or if you're looking to trade OTC penny stocks, or if you just don't like payment for order flow, then I recommend you sign up for Interactive Brokers. Interactive Brokers is a great trading platform. They have highly discounted trading throughout the entire world. And both Webull and Interactive Brokers give you the full pre-market and after hours trading from 4 a.m. until 8 p.m. Eastern time. Now, I do have material connections with both of those, so whenever you sign up for either one of those brokers, not only are you getting a great broker to trade with, you're also helping me to continue to produce these great videos for you. Now, finally, I want to remind you to hit that like button, subscribe, and follow the page if you haven't already. I hope you have a lot of success trading, and I will see you later today.